Hi everyone. In the previous video, we looked at thermochemical equations and how to use these equations to calculate for the change in the enthalpy of a chemical reaction using the Hess law heat summation. So in this tutorial, we will look at the principles that govern calorimetry, which is an experimental way to determine the enthalpy change accompanying a chemical reaction. Okay, so the measurement of the amount of heat flow taking place during a chemical reaction and in phase changes can be done through calorimetry. During calorimetry, the temperature change is recorded using a thermometer. From this temperature change, the amount of heat flow can then be calculated. We have to remember that in calorimetry, the heat absorbed by the calorimeter, which is Qcal, is equal to the heat capacity of the calorimeter multiplied to the change in temperature delta T. Since the calorimeter is an isolated and an adiabatic system, this means that all the heats involved stays inside our calorimeter. So we can say that the summation of all heat is equal to zero. We know that whatever heat lost from the system shown in red will be transferred to the surroundings or the green area in the figure. Therefore, the heat absorbed by the calorimeter is equal to the heat evolved by the reaction. In symbols, by simply Q reaction is equal to negative Q calorimeter. So using the, the previous equations, we can therefore calculate the molar heat capacity of the reaction, and this equation is shown in this slide. Remember that N refers to the number of moles of the reactants consumed or the number of moles of the products produced. When we use calorimeters, typically we use water as a common heat sink or a heat source for the reaction being studied. If water is being used, it will absorb all heat if the process being studied releases heat. Or water will become a heat source if the process being studied needs to absorb heat. We can use Q is equal to MC delta T to correlate any temperature change with the heat flow with our material. For water, the specific heat capacity is equal to 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Sometimes we just use the entire calorimeter as the heat source or heat sink. So in this case, we can just use the calorimeter constant to correlate with the temperature change with the corresponding heat flow. We have two types of calorimeter. One type is shown in this slide. If the reaction vessel is tightly sealed, this is known as the bomb calorimeter. So in this case, the results of the measurement is a change in the internal energy or the delta U of the reaction. So a much more humble reaction vessel is shown in this slide. Well, you should be familiar with a coffee cup calorimeter. This reaction vessel is kept open and exposed to a constant pressure of the atmosphere then the calorimetric measurements will yield the change in enthalpy or delta H. Another important thing to point out is that most of the time, chemical reactions are conducted in open vessels, and therefore the delta H of a reaction is more useful and more commonly encountered than the delta U of reaction. Okay, so let us now try to consider the following problem. A 0.1326 gram sample of magnesium was burned in a constant pressure calorimeter. The total heat capacity of the calorimeter plus water was 5,760 joules per degree Celsius. If the temperature rise of the calorimeter with water was 0.570 degrees Celsius, determine the enthalpy of combustion of magnesium. So we are also given here the balanced chemical reaction for the combustion of magnesium. We start by recalling the main ideas in a calorimeter and use these equations to answer this problem. So these equations are listed in this slide. We can expand this equation into N times the enthalpy of combustion is equal to the negative heat capacity of the calorimeter multiplied to the change in temperature. Now this equation can be rearranged into the change in enthalpy is equal to the negative of the heat capacity multiplied to the change in temperature divided by the number of moles. Now substituting the values to our equation and calculating 
yields the enthalpy of combustion to be negative 602 kilojoules per mole. Okay, to finally end up this discussion, you should be able to answer this problem and you must get a value of negative 1368 kilojoules per mole.